Prior to the era of colonization, many people began exploring the ocean and the cultures residing across them. History highlighted this era as a golden age of discovery, which led to the development of international trade via sea voyages. Dutch East India Company was the first to launch this business of exploration. They employed hundreds of ships to acquire and trade gold, porcelain, spices, and silks around the globe. But running these massive operations wasn't cheap. Unfortunately, the company lacked funds to support these trips at the beginning, and hence they publicly invited private citizens to invest money in their ships in exchange for a share of ship's profit. The company held open bidding events at the docks so that any citizen could easily invest their money. This strategy enabled the corporation to finance bigger excursions, boosting earnings for both the company and the astute investors. Within a few years, this approach grew increasingly popular among other firms since, with this business model, common people easily supplemented the money crunch faced by the companies. With this approach, the Dutch East India Company became the richest organization the world has ever seen, holding a value of $7.9 trillion. This unknowingly invented business model by the Dutch East India Company is referred to as the stock market today. However, the modern stock market is increasingly more complicated than its original incarnation and difficult to comprehend. So to help you with that, today we bring you this video on the modernistic stock market. With this video, you are going to learn everything about the stock market, what it is and how it works, in details. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. First of all, let's try to comprehend what is a stock or share market. Imagine a very small business, for instance, a tea stall. Let's say Alex owns a very good tea stall, and he is killing the market by making a lot of money on a daily basis. It's been a month since the business has started booming, and now Alex is thinking of making it even bigger by launching a new tea cafe. The capital he has is not enough to do so. Thus, he approached banks to ask for a loan. The banks said it was too risky for them to invest in his idea right away. Alex then approached rich investors, but they weren't buying either. He then realized that he had one more option. He can go public, giving anyone who wants the chance to invest in his business through something called the Initial Public Offering, or IPO. Investors pay a small amount, let's say $20, to own a small part or share of Alex's business. With money obtained from IPOs, Alex is doing his best to grow his tea empire. In recent months, his sales started going above and beyond the roof. So it's time for him to pay respects to his investors. He can share some portion of the profits with his investors. This shared profit is called a dividend. It's not necessary to share the profit, but it does help to get people excited about his company and more likely to buy his stocks, like Charlie. Charlie was out of the country on IPO day, but she thinks Alex is the smartest person in the whole world, and I know this tea cafe thing is going to be huge. So she offers to buy some shares from one of the original investors for twice the price she paid for them. She thinks, if Alex keeps this up, I can sell these shares for even more later on. That's the share market. It's nothing more than people purchasing and selling little pieces of companies based on their understanding of the piece's future value. It's just, in real life, this phenomenon is happening thousands of times a second all over the world. There are numerous stock markets across the world, but the New York Stock Exchange is the biggest kahuna of all. It was founded in 1972 under the Buttonwood Tree on a Wall Street Road of New York City. Today, it's a monstrous empire where shares of big traditional companies like IBM, Walmart, P&G, Visa, and J.P. Morgan are traded. NASDAQ is a sibling of the New York Stock Exchange founded in 1971. It doesn't have any physical presence. All the NASDAQ trading happens electronically. Here, tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Tesla make and grow more bucks. Moving forward, we will understand how the stock market works. And to do that, we will first have to understand what indexing is. 
All the stock exchanges across the globe contemplate a whole bunch of share prices to formulate one clear number. This statistically mapped clean number is what we call the stock market index or stock index. For example, the S&P 500 and Dow index. The S&P indexing tracks the 500 largest companies of both New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, while the Dow only follows 30 companies that seem most important. But the Dow and S&P are trailblazer indexes, but they are only applicable to stock exchanges in America. Other countries have their own indexes dedicated to stock measurement. India has BSE, Sensex, and Nifty 50. The UK has London's FTSE 100 index, Germany has DAX, and the list goes on. All these stock market indices determine the overall market performance at a particular instance. Once the day's bidding procedure starts, everyone can invest their money into the market by understanding this financial stat. Also in the stock market, everyone gets an equal opportunity to play this gamble of buying stocks. Those who buy the stocks become fractional owners of the businesses. Their investments help the company grow, and as it becomes more successful, the company's stock index value rises, causing more individuals to become interested in purchasing their shares. As the demand for the stock increases, so does their price, increasing the costs for prospective buyers and raising the value of the company's stocks people already own. For the company, this increased interest helps fund new initiatives and also boosts its overall market value by showing how many people are willing to invest in their idea. However, if the company loses its value for some reason, the reverse can also happen. Let's say some hazardous content shows up in Alex's tea product. In this scenario, all the investors, including Charlie, will start selling their shares at the present cost in hopes of making a profit before the company loses more value. As the stocks are sold and demand for the stock goes down, the stock price falls, and with it, the company's market value. This can leave investors with big losses unless Alex's company starts looking profitable again. This teeterboard of supply and demand is influenced by many factors. Companies are under the unavoidable influence of market forces, such as the fluctuating prices of materials, changes in production technology, and shifting labor prices. The investors can also get anxious about changes in leadership, bad publicity, or large factors like new laws and trade policies. Or even, they would be interested in pursuing their other financial goals by taking out their money from the stock market. All these variables cause the day-to-day -day noise in the market, which can make companies appear more or less successful. And in the stock market, appearing to lose value often leads to losing investors and, in turn, losing the company's actual value. The opposite of this is also true. The possibility of high future returns could encourage people to invest in risky new ideas. That's the whole idea of the stock market as a whole. In simple terms, the stock market drives companies to make good decisions so that they have more money to give back to shareholders as well as to grow more money and create jobs, which is eventually a greater good for both investors, common people, and the country's economy. Human confidence in the market is a key factor that can trigger everything from economic booms to financial crises. And tracking this fluctuating behavior of the market is quite difficult. That's the reason why most people promote reliable long-term investments over trying to make risky, quick cash. However, in today's age of tremendous breakthroughs, professionals are continually developing techniques to improve their chances of success in this very unpredictable system. As more individuals learn about this complicated system, they will be able to trade equities, support businesses they believe in, and achieve their financial objectives. The first step to do so is getting invested. The world's biggest stock market tycoon, Warren Buffett, whose value is over $117 billion, suggests buying an S&P 500 low-cost index fund to get you started.
Index fund in the USA is a kind of fund that puts a little bit of your money in all companies in the index. The other option is to give your money to professional investors who will try to beat a stock market for a certain investment percentage fee. In India, this kind of investment is known as mutual funds. Experts will carry out your investment tasks, so you're basically hitching your wagon into the stock market with us. That's all we have about the stock market today. We hope this video was informative and exciting for all of you out there. I hope that it will help you launch your rewarding financial journey. Thank you so much for watching the video, and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.